Hello guys and welcome to episode 13 of my Endless Legend playthrough, playing as the Forgotten. And today there's going to be quite a lot of things we are doing. Uh, first of all we want to wipe out the Necrophages so that we don't have to worry about them anymore. Uh, then what I'm going to do is uh, explore, and I'll probably do that at the same time actually. And then the other thing we need to keep an eye on is the dust depositories. We are still building some of those in our settlements. And uh, once we've finished those, we need to change our population over to dust in order to boost our dust income. Currently, we are at 983 dust per turn, which is pretty good. And we just need to basically make that more and more. But in the meantime, uh, we are just going to build those dust depositories. And once they're all finished, uh, our dust will boom. Uh, we will be on about 1.5 thousand dust a turn which will be pretty good uh, for this point in the game uh, obviously we will want to keep developing but that will rely mostly on my exploration because I am going to be relying on my spies in order to get us new technologies anyway after that mouthful we are waiting for Aramon to be sieged and also we have Zaima heading to her quest objective so that's another thing we're going to end up doing this uh, turn. Let's search this ruin that's next to Rallyan. We've got 10 Palladian, that's quite nice. And um, now we are going to search the one uh, down at the bottom there. So that's about it. Let's move on to the next turn. I just moved up my predator unit there so that we get them as reinforcements. So we've completed a dust depository at Avirelia. So let's now shift the population over to dust. Uh, Gula Yawa is currently not assigned to any mission. That would be because she is captured. <laughs> so I'm not sure why it is telling me that. Uh, one thing I will want to get is one step ahead. So that we get uh, the minus 50% turns in jail on captured hero. That will be very important for us and on Gulayawa. So that's what we will go towards next when she levels up. Uh, Zaima is currently hurt quite a lot, uh, mainly due to the fact that we can't heal our units at the moment, I think. Uh, there's currently a side quest going on, which in order, well, which after we complete will allow us to heal our units again, because currently no healing is happening in the whole of Origa, and that's why I'm slowly sieging down this settlement rather than attacking it. Either way, we can continue her on our on her journey. Just hope she doesn't get attacked on the way there. We'll move on to the next turn, and the other thing we need to get is learn from others, so that we get the extra experience for heroes and infiltrated heroes. So they are asking for peace pretty much, the necrophages, but I'm not going to give it to them. Because what will happen is they'll end up build, building up and just attacking me again, because they are a very warlike faction. So for our empire plan, we have 1,718 influence points. We are going to maintain the uh, plus 25 approval on cities. We're also going to get the plus three dust per population on cities. I'm trying to think what else we could go for. We could get the plus 20% cost reduction on researches. And that's currently costing us 1,300.
I think we're going to keep it like that. Save some of our influence for agent actions. So we will apply that. And what we'll, what I'll do is uh, research this next turn so that our empire plan comes into effect. We now have enough die to get extra influence as well. So we are going to activate that. And as you can see, that increased our influence income from 100 to 150 per turn. Our current income is 1,884 dust per turn. That's pretty crazy. And we're sitting on 3,000 dust right now. So that will start to allow us to finish buildings instantly. So for example, if we come here, I can finish the Burrow Street in instantly for 1,125 dust. So that's basically like taking this nine turns and turning it into pretty much one turn. And that's pretty crazy, really, when you think about it. So having this much dust coming in now is so beneficial for us. Either way, let's uh, not hang about. Let's keep our armies on the move. Going to keep moving them manually. And it looks like we need to either defeat a Herners or Tetik army. Well, that's a bit awkward. I'd rather not get involved, to be honest. Just trying to think how I could solve that. Let's uh, get the Predators from Carrad to come down to Rallion and uh, help out there. In the meantime, my Assassin can sit in Rallion. I'm actually going to retrofit the uh, Assassin while I'm there as well. Okay. So we are continuing to siege here, which is great. And that's pretty much everything done, I believe. We shall continue to explore with this assassin in the next turn and I am going to now get the learn from others although was I waiting for one more turn I'll just go to the next turn anyway it doesn't really make much of a difference okay waiting one more turn was was uh, the correct thing to do because now learn from others costs 400 dust less so we are going to take advantage of that, get learned from others, which is a unique technology for our faction. And I also need to get the mercenary market at some point so that we can buy heroes because that will be very important for us as we will rely on them heavily in order to infiltrate other settlements. So Zaima has leveled up. If we go to the academy and go to her skill tree, I'm going to get the one step ahead perk. So that she spends less time in jail if she gets captured. And now we have an empty research queue. So the last unique technology that we can get access to is the mist here but I think going towards something else would be better like this dust refinery for example plus 30 percent dust on city will definitely be ideal I'm actually going to quick research that and start building those in our settlements because that will help us greatly so let's go ahead and add those to the queue and actually uh, move them up in the queues as well I'm going to do that for all the settlements. Might even be worse, worth fast building those, although it will cost me 2,157 dust per dust refinery. But in the long run, that will definitely be worth it. So just sorting out these queues now. And currently we don't have enough glass steel to continue building those. So that will have to do. Probably should have prioritized building one in Adakin. So what I might do is take it out of Carrad there and put it in Adakin as instead. We'll put it to the front of the queue. 
And that should be good. So just this assassin to move, really. And I'm trying to find the Volta's lands. Ah, we've finally found another of their settlements. That's good stuff. So in the next turn we can continue with Zaima's quest. Our militia leveled up and at Am. We don't have much else to build here other than an assassin at the moment so we're going to build that. Our gold booster has ended unfortunately. And Avarelia has had its population decreased. The enemy agent was partially wounded. And it looks like whoever yellow is, or orange, has stolen vision from us. That's quite annoying. But not very detrimental to our settlement. But there we go. So we got 640 dust. Oh, this was the side quest. This wasn't her hero quest. Her hero quest is down here. So let's go and do that now. So with 15 glass steel in reserves, send Zaima to search the unspoiled ruins in Hamara to repair her legendary swords and herself. That is what we are going to do now. So let's uh, pin that quest and make sure that we do it. Uh, we need to sign one treaties of peace with the other empires to get a Sisters of Mercy army with three units. So that might be worth doing as well. Uh, maybe I can do that with the Volters uh, if we go into our diplomacy. Uh, talk to uh, the Volters, ask for peace. There we go. That's wonderful. I'm also going to ask the same of uh, the Broken Lords, if I can. Awesome. So we're at peace with two nations there. And that's just going to come in handy so that they don't attack my armies. And I might also want to make peace with the Ardent Mages here. So let's go into negotiations, ask them for peace. And that's glorious. Okay. So that should allow me to explore a little bit, hopefully. And now I can go about infiltrating all of their settlements. Now that will also complete the quest that I was just talking about, so that's awesome. And next turn we should get three units of Sisters of Mercy units. Oh, before I move on to the next turn, I should have really changed the units so that they were upgraded, because then I would have got those three units for free and they would have been upgraded automatically. But unfortunately, I missed out on doing that. And if we maintain the diplomatic status for five turns, we get a new hero. That's awesome. Okay. So where has that army arrived? There they are. And they are rank four, but they don't have any equipment. So that's kind of annoying. But uh, what I'm going to do is take them down to Carid, I think. And we will leave them in there. Very cool looking units, uh, but uh, probably won't get much use out of them before the end of the game. So 1,183 dust per turn coming in now, which is quite something. Still just uh, sieging this settlement until we can take it over. Zayma can head down to Hamara. By the, by the time she gets there, we should have 15 glass steel in reserve. So that should be good. And 
Let's just see where we can go. With the assassin. Why can't we go any further? Is it because they closed their borders? I think it might have been. Okay, so 17 turns until we get Guliyawa back. Actually, I might be able to ask them for her back now. Uh, just because we are at peace instead of Cold War. So let's go ahead and ask for third builder Guliyawa back. And what will we give them in exchange? Yeah, they're not going to let me have that. What does a commercial agreement do? That's not very useful for us. Oh, I can give them dust, of course. Um, so I could give them all my dust and they would still not be happy. That's crazy. Look how much. I would have to give them all of that in order to get Guliyawa back. <laughs> no thanks. I'm good. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Okay, I guess we'll just have to wait it out. In the meantime, however, uh, my armies will continue to rally in because we need to complete the side quest there. Actually, I could take my Sisters of Mercy army down there as well, but I don't think they would be there in time, so maybe not worth the effort. So the Moonleaf booster has ended. And the population of Avarelia has grown to five. So what I'm tempted to do now is uh, fast build the dust refinery in Vakal. That will increase this dust income by a lot. And also if we do the same at Adakin, that will use up some more of our dust in order to get more dust over time. So a good investment, I believe. And I think I added that to every um, settlement that I could. But we need to save some of this glass still for Zaima's quest. And soon we will get an extra hero from the Sisters of Mercy quest. So we're going to have three heroes. Then I want to buy more from the Mercenary Market. So what I might do is go into the research and just get the Mercenary Market now because... There's no point really waiting around. The sooner I have a hero, the better. And that has unlocked Era 4, Age of Industry. So Dust Tier 1 equipment available for heroes and units. Newly trained units will now be elites, level 4, and cost more. Uh, luxury resources revealed. Dust Orchid, Dust Water, Hydra Mail, uh, Pixie Blood, and Red Sang. And strategic resources, Mithrite and Hyperium, Empire... Plan level 4 available and legendary deeds of the era are unlocked and are achievable. Okay. So, with that done, we can now go into the marketplace. And if we go to heroes, we can save up to buy ourselves a hero. So, I will probably get Sable Deceiver Napob Dauda and. Uh, a fallow Tegret and so on, all these kind of uh, forgotten people who have the the right perks to infiltrate, basically. So we can go down the, the double or nothing and one step ahead for all of them and basically get in as many settlements as possible because that would just be awesome. So that's the plan, at least. Uh, I need, what, 3,000 uh, dust before I can do that? And we're currently getting 1,000 dust per turn. We discovered loads of luxury resources, which is awesome. And plenty of Hyperium and Mithrite. So the other things we need to look at doing are unlocking the extractors for those. Currently, we can't even extract blood crystals and so on. So we need to get that. Uh, so Advanced Harvester and Reaping Station are both ones we should get. 
also the uh, rare metal foundries and the smelting station but I might be able to steal those technologies so I'm, I'm not going to bother researching them for now now this dust water deposit gives us plus 50 percent dust on cities and that is extremely important so maybe what I should do is research that one sooner than later so let's stop that one and we'll we will research the advanced harvester first we need 2390 dust in order to do that and look at these settlements they look so cool the ardent mages architecture here very awesome I haven't really looked into it much before it looks very cool anyway uh, that's fine tempted to retrofit the army but we need the the glass deal because what I can do is head towards this uh, ruin in the next turn and complete that so let's get the predators to head to rally in anyway and that's everything we might be able to get the justices into carrot nope not quite so let's end the turn there and there's so many things that I've got to remember to do that it's uh, actually getting quite hard at the moment. I'm definitely going to focus on buying the heroes first. And armies now regenerate health as they should. Great. We completed a dust depository in Carid. So we can now move the population over to dust. Wonderful. Let's complete this quest for Zaima. And a desire for vengeance. Zaima is a pale shadow of her former self after her incarceration and torture. You must send her out into the world to rebuild her strength and reforge her swords, Shadowbinder and Shadow Brand. With the completed objective, the outcome is Zaima's strength is fully returned and her swords, Shadowbinder and Shadow Brand forged anew. As to her soul, only time will tell us if it is beyond repair. Okay. Um, so Shadow Brand and Shadow Binder require six glass steel each, and we can equip those on our heroes. Not sure how useful that's going to be because I'm not planning to use the heroes to attack anything. But uh, we are moving on to the next part of the quest now. Zaima returns. Zaima paces like a caged animal, clawing her hair as she tries to recall her tormentors. I remember the Draken most of all. In the darkness, devoid of any light, save the torches they carried with them, I lost track of the days, but he would always be the first to have his turn. After waking me with a pail of freezing water, he would begin by peeling a fresh strip of skin from my flesh small and perfectly rectangular with his fetid lizard breath spilling over me he said that if i could count the strips i would know how many days i'd been held that is pretty rank i'm just gonna put that out there as she speaks the cold rage gathers inside me during her earlier years when the masters were bolder zaima led many raids against the draken perhaps this draken one of those left nurturing an icy grudge. I have crossed his path before, I'm sure, she says. The way he eyed me with such hatred, the way he whispered the same two words in his bastard tongue. He knows me. She tells me one of the claws of his left hand was missing. A misshapen stump where the digit should be. Loose me and let me track him down. I will cut his monstrous head from his scaled body. And I will gladly sharpen the blade for you, Zayuma, I interrupt. But we must be clever, lest these cockroaches scurry into the dirt never to be seen again, and our missing companions may also never return. 
I counsel that our influence must reach into every nook of Origa, and that we must resurrect lost ways if we are to track these men. By extending our eyes, our ears, our reach to every corner of the world, we will first widen the lasso. Then we will tighten the noose. Okay, so improve your authority and your empire until it reaches 1,595 influence. And then we get 30 quicksilver. So Zaimo is strong again, at least in body. But the trail to her tormentors has grown cold. To have any chance of finding them, your grasp over your people and your enemies must also grow stronger. I really love the narrative in these quests. It's very awesome. So... Zaim is now available, uh, her portrait has changed, and it looks like she's being given the swords automatically, so that's pretty cool. We can also now get dust armor, so I mustn't forget to equip my, my units with that, because I think it's better than what I currently have. So if we go to our predators, uh, I can go to armor, and I think dust armor is better, possibly. Yeah, it's much better. So if we put dust armor onto them, that should help us out. Kind of removes the offensive stats, but the defensive stats are just as good, in my opinion. And I think this actually gives us more initiative. Yeah, it does. Anyway, so that's pretty good. If we go to the weapon... Not sure if the tier 1 bow is better. It has more damage for sure. Removes the extra initiative we get though. Okay, actually, our tier 2 titanium bow is actually better than the tier 1 dust bow. Uh, the flying slayer though is slightly worse. Maybe instead we should think about getting two of the crossbows. But even then, getting the tier 2 titanium ones would be better. So let's not bother with that. Uh, let's have a look at the accessories. We can get regeneration or improved life. And currently we have improved damage, so that's fine. We will leave that at that. Uh, for our assassin, uh, we will get the armor, of course. For them that will be a big upgrade and for the weapons that will also be a huge upgrade I think so currently we are using the iron legendary swords so we pretty much double our damage one, ha one hand axes will give us more attack I think maybe the swords are better here. And for the equipment, I think getting improved life would be a good idea. Plus 20% life on unit. Okay, yeah, that's fine. So we've upgraded them. We've upgraded the Predator. I think we should upgrade the Justice here. So let's again go for the Dust Armor. Weapons, we can get the Dust Sword and Dust Shield. Looking very cool there, although she's kind of holding the sword the wrong way around. But never mind. <laughs> we will give them Improved Life. And I will also give them the Tier 3 Iron Ring. And that's everything, so that's good. That's done. What's uh, We're basically just going to have to wait for the next part of the quest to complete. We can upgrade this unit now. I can also upgrade that assassin. And if we take them out of the settlement now, we can group them with the predators. And we can attack one of these armies. 
I think attacking the orcs would be easier, so I'm going to do that. But unfortunately, guys, that has been my time, and I've been really enjoying this episode. A lot of stuff has happened, a lot of stuff needs to happen. Um, yeah, we're making great progress, and before I forget, actually, I'm just going to jump into the marketplace and buy myself a hero. So let's uh, go ahead and get... Uh, Sable Deceiver Napog Dauda and she is now available we will set her up in the next episode but for now guys thanks for watching hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one goodbye